This is Math 99. We're going to look at Section 3.5, uh, Transformations on Functions. Basically, if we have a function that gives us a shape, um, how do we move it around? What, how do we uh, change some parameters for it? So let's go ahead and start with a function. I'll have a function uh, that I'm just going to call f, and I'll just say a simple parabola, uh, x squared. So right here is a graph of what that function looks like. Notice it has a uh, this vertex where it changes direction at zero, zero, and it goes over one, up one, and it goes over one, up a different amount. But let's just think about that. It has this vertex at zero, zero, and it goes over one, up one, and then it you know, keeps going. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new function f. I'm gonna, I'm gonna alter this function. So if I just type f of x again, it'll just you know, graph it again. Now, how about this? If I go plus two out here, Oops, <laughs> plus two out here. Notice what happened is it took the whole function all and it moved it up two. If you think about this function, I've got these inputs x, and f of x is the collection of all my outputs. When x is one, y is one. When x is two, y is four. But when I add two to all those outputs, I'm changing all the y values. I'm moving it up two. Notice if I had gone plus three, it moves the whole thing up three, right? This point that was at zero, zero, now is at zero, three. This point with it was, that was at 1, 1 is now at 1, 4. Everything gets moved up 3. And I can move it down by subtracting outside of there. That's kind of cool. I can move it inside and outside. Uh, I'm sorry, up, up, up and down. So what if I go plus 2 on the inside of the Interesting to me about doing it this way is I'm actually messing with the inputs now before the outputs get to it. So I'm messing with the x values before uh, it gets squared. And notice it, it, what happens when you're inside, it's actually a little counterintuitive. This actually has moved everything to the left too. It's making everything happen two times earlier. Like what was at zero is now at negative two. So things that go on inside the function move it left, right. Things that go on outside the function move it up, down. Writing this this way, this f of x plus 2, notice what I could have done is I could have said x plus 2 squared. That gives me the same shape. I've just plugged the x plus 2 into the, into the function. Or when I moved it up 3, I could have said x squared plus 3. I could have written it with the original function, not in the function notation. So there's a couple things going on here. If I want to move stuff up, down, I can add something outside. And if I want to move it left, right, I do it inside the function, but it's, it's counterintuitive. So if I say f of x minus h, that's going to move it right h values, whatever that is. So if I think about uh, something like this, uh, my parent function is x squared, and I go x plus 7 squared uh, minus 3. My, my parent function is x squared. Like I know what that looks like, it's at zero, zero. This is going to move it left, opposite of what it seems like it should do, seven. And this is gonna move it down three. So notice if I graph that, I'll go back to my graphing. What do I have again? <laughs> x plus seven squared minus three. I've moved it to the left seven down three. Look at my vertex is right at that point, negative seven, negative three. It was at zero, zero. It's been moved left seven down three. Notice my parent function is x squared. Same shape, just moved around. So I've got uh, this moving at left, right. I got this moving it up, down. If we think about what that does in a table, so here's a function table for f of x. Uh, when two x is two, f of two is one. Right, input, output. So notice that this, f of x minus 3, is going to move it down 3. So g then, what g will do is all of these all of these y values will get moved down 3. So I can subtract 3 from each of these. So when x is 2, uh, instead of being 1, minus 3, that'll be a negative 2. That'll be a 0. Minus 3, that'll be a 4. Uh, minus 3, that'll be an 8. And then looking at this table, x minus 3. I'm making everything happen 3 earlier. So if I make a table, new table for this g function, 
my outputs aren't going to change. I haven't done anything to my y value. So I'm going to keep the 1, the 3, the 7, and the 11. Now here's a way to think about this. Um, when f when when we input 2 into f, we get 1. So what we want g to do is we want this value to be something that forces this to be a 2. x minus 3 equals 2. So notice it's 5. We're not subtracting 3 from these values. We're adding 3 to these values. Because when I plug this in to g, I'm going it minus 3. It'll shift me back down to the 2. So 7, 9, 11. Again, things that happen inside the function, they feel, they feel a little counterintuitive. All right, so we have this function f of x equals x squared. We know that goes through 0, 0, has a vertex at 0, 0, and it goes up like this, over 1, up 1, and then keeps growing. So what would an equation for this? Notice this has been moved to the right 2. So if it's going to move it right, it's going to be something that goes on inside the function. So I'm, there's two ways I could write this. I could write this uh, related to f, or I could write it back to related to its original function. I'm going to write it to f first. So since it moved it left right, it's going to affect the input values, the x values. And it moved it right, so this will be minus 2 because that is intuition. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, opposite of what your intuition would be. If I wanted to write it straight back to x squared, I would write it as x minus 2 squared. I've got these toolkit functions. These are the functions that I want you to just kind of know the shape of. So x squared is a parabola. looks like this. It has a vertex here at 0, 0. Then one thing to know is these go, uh, always think about, just go over 1, then up 1. And parabolas actually go over 1, up 1, over 1, up 3, over 1, up 5. It's like consecutive odd numbers. Uh, absolute value also has a vertex at 0, 0. And it looks like this. These go over 1, up 1. That's like a 45 degree angle. So over 1, up 1, just continually. Uh, square root of x looks like half of a parabola on its side. It also goes over 1, up 1. But then it goes over 3, up 1, over 5, up 1. Cubics, like this. Again, that initial step is over 1, up 1. And uh, 1 over x look like this, or this is the point 1, 1. So those are our parent functions. If I know that I have a cubic, it's going to be this basic shape somehow changed. I know if I have uh, absolute value, it's going to be this basic shape somehow changed. So let's do some sketches of these. Uh, g of x is the absolute value, I'm sorry, is x minus 3, that quantity squared, plus 4. So first off, it has this squaring in it. So I know the parent function is a parabola, and that vertex is usually at 0, 0. But this has been shifted right 3. So if I think about going right 3 and then up 4, now the vertex is at the point 3, 4, and it still goes over 1 up one. It hasn't been stretched in that direction. There's a good sketch of what that would look like. Absolute value. I know that absolute value looks like this with that vertex at zero, zero. That's the parent function. But if I do this, I've moved it left one and down five. So if I go left one, down five, now my vertex is going to be down here at negative one, negative five, and it's still going to go over one, up one. So that graph should look something like this. All right, this g of x, now this is a 1 over x getting shifted around. I know that 1 over x looks like this, where this is at 1, 1. This is at negative 1, negative 1. And notice that I have the plus 2 outside the function, so it's going to get moved up 2. But then this minus 3 inside the function is going to get move it uh, to the right 3. So if I move this right 3 up 2, I'm adding 3 to x and adding 2 to uh to y so this point that was at 1 1 will be at 4 3. this point that was at negative 1 negative 1 if i add 3 
to negative 1, that's going to be a 2, negative 1 plus 2, 1. And then that's what that shape would look like. So I've got, so far, a parent function that looks like, uh, like this. If my function is f of x, the transformation on that function, I could write as x minus h plus k. Notice my vertex goes to the point hk. I've moved it left, right in the h direction and up, down, in. So here is a function that I'm going to call, I'm going to call this f. Um, and you don't need to know the rule for it. I'll, I'll show it to you. This is what the rule, this is what makes that. But um, this is f. So let's think about g, things we can do to g. Notice um, I have this set up so that I have um, g of x is f of x minus h plus k. So k moves it up down. So notice I can do this. Move it up by increasing that k value. This would be like f of x plus 5.1. Move it down by making k negative. And I can move it left right with the h value. If I make h positive, since it's x minus h, it's going to move it in that direction and that direction if I make x, h negative. So outside the function moves it up down. Inside the function, uh, whoops, <laughs> moves it left, right. So now let's think a little bit about um, some other types of transformations. Let's think about a little bit of stretching. So I'm going to bring back that old, uh, good old parabola. And I'm going to make a new function, call it g. And instead of uh, x squared, I'm going to multiply this x squared by one third. So notice I'm going to go one third of f of x. Notice what it does. It like compresses it in this direction, in this uh, vertical uh, direction. In other words, it's making it grow a third of the rate that it was. So instead of over one up one, it's now over one up three. Uh, I'm sorry, a third. And if I wanted it to be steeper, I could multiply it by something like 2. Now, instead of going over 1 up 1, it goes over 1 up 2. This multiplier out here will do that. So this, if I multiply on the outside, it stretches it in the uh, vertical direction, up, down. And I'm going to take a different equation, one of our other ones, uh, one of our other parent functions, square root of x. And so notice uh, if I say 3 f of x, instead of going over 1 up 1, I've stretched it by a factor of 3 in this direction, so it goes over 1 up 3. Like everything's 3 times higher than it would have been. Um, and if I make this negative, it reflects it. It makes it go in the negative direction. right? It makes it go down, over 1, down 2, instead of over 1, up 1. And that's what happens if I multiply outside the function. If I multiply inside the function, let's make this a 2. What it's done is it's compressed it in this way, in like a horizontal direction. So notice that like this went um, over 1, 2, 3, over 4, up 2. Now it only goes over 2, up 2. This compression inside is this direction. And if I want to make it go to the left, I can negate it on the inside like that. So I've got all kinds of stretching going on. Things that go on inside the function, this is going to stretch it this direction. Things that go outside the function, it's going to stretch it in that vertical direction, horizontal, vertical, horizontal like the horizon. So if I wanted to sketch this absolute value, 3 times the absolute value of x minus 4 plus 2. So first off, I know that absolute value looks like this, and it goes over 1 up. That was really poorly drawn. <laughs> That's not much better. And uh, so first off, this is going to move it right 4 up 2. So my vertex is now going to be at 4, 2. And this 3 is going to stretch it 
in this direction by three. So it's still going to go over one, but instead of going up one, it's going to go up three. So it's going to be like a much steeper version of that one. This one we, we graphed, I gave you that example on Desmos. Uh, parent function looks like this, over one, up one. It's not, sh it's not shifted left, right at all. It's just compressed. So instead of over one, this, this moves the left, right. It goes over a half up one. So it's going to look like that. How about this? If I square something that makes a parabola, that gives me that parent function. This will move it left three, down one. And now instead of going over one, up one, that multiplication is happening outside the function. It goes over one, up a half. So it's going to make it look like it's fatter. Over one, up a half. So take a look at this. Uh, relate function g to function f. So if this is this is f right here. So let me think about this. This is happening faster. Remember things that are inside the function are counterintuitive. So g of x is happening faster than f. So there's going to be a multiplier in here. It's compressing it. So I see how this gets out to 4. But this only gets out to, actually, let's look at this one. This gets out to 6, but this one ends up at 2. So it gets there 3 times faster, so this will be times 3 in here. Uh, notice also these stretches, I could negate it inside or negate it outside. Things that go outside are going to deal with up, down. So this will reflect it in that vertical um, direction. This one negative inside will reflect it in a horizontal direction. So if I look at this, negative square root of x minus 2. That minus 2 is going to move it right to, so it would be here, the vertex. I know the parent function looks like this. And since it's negated, instead of going over 1, up 1, this is like a negative 1. It'll go over 1, down 1. So that'll look like, like that. Put a negative on the inside on this one. So that negative 3, my parent function for this looks like this. So that negative 3 would move it down 3. And since I'm negating inside, it changes left, right. So instead of going this direction, instead of going over 1, up 1, it'll go back 1, up 1. So that'll look that different. So give uh, these a try out of the homework set and let me know what questions you have.